Of course, Aleka Talks is a platform for leaders of a sustainable future. Um, today, we'll be talking about drones, more specifically, um, how they are used in farming, right? So Aleka Talks has invited two leading entrepreneurs of Malaysia. They're going to share their knowledge um, about unmanned aerial solutions, technical specifications, payload, all those things. So um, if you're a techie like me, you'll enjoy that part. Um, we'll hear about reducing CO2 emissions, lowering our footprint, very important for the sustainable aspect of things. We're also going to learn about how it increases crop yields and maybe increase your revenue, right? And give you that kind of competitive advantage. So thank you very much for joining us. Stick around and learn how we can all be leaders of a sustainable future. All right. Yes, I can see it. I can ah, see it. Excellent. Okay, great stuff. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks everyone for, for joining us uh, today. I know it's, uh, it's smack dab in the middle of the working day, so I do appreciate your time. So let's um, let's crack on, shall we? Um, so our agenda today is we're going to have an introduction to IDC and team, which I think Serge has already done. Okay. And then we're going to go on to some statistics on conventional palm oil pesticide spray methods. Uh, what's currently being used now and what we're doing to sort of change, uh, change the paradigm for that. Uh, we're talking on how UAS systems uh, can reduce costs and increase efficiency uh, for state owners and farmers. And then after this, uh, Tunku Asnal will present on uh, a case study, multiple case studies actually, on multiple yes, states that he's, that he's currently um, sort of managing at the moment. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, what we're going to do in the future, what we hope to do, um, two minutes, and then the Q&A session, which I envisage will take up the uh, majority of our time. So I'm not going to bore you with all with 10 million slides, you know, I, I think it's far more interesting if we if we get some intellectual discourse going. So, without further ado, introducing the IDC, okay, we formed it in 2019 and Originally, it was a collaboration between my company, Atlas, uh, which does risk management, and uh, Arsenal's company, uh, QC Protection and Investigation. We were originally formed to deliver UAS pilot courses, you know, drone, drone piloting courses in Malaysia. But uh, we very quickly discovered that competitors were already established. Now we call that a red ocean, where there's lots of sharks and everyone's eating each other. So the sea is red. The sea of industry is red with blood. So we thought, look, maybe it's time to pivot to, uh, to another paradigm. Uh, we shifted our target to agriculture, uh, focusing specifically on pesticides, uh, fertilizing, and topographical mapping for, for farmers. Okay, so. The team, uh, I believe Serge already introduced us, so it's exactly the same content that you've seen. Uh, just, I'm just going to skip this. Right, so before we begin, some statistics on, on current methods uh, in terms of spraying pesticides and mapping. So, pesticide spraying using manual labor is inefficient and environmentally uh, destructive at this point in time. What happens is at this current point in time, uh, people send manual laborers uh, to go in and cover palm oils in, in either with trunk injection or via spraying. Now, the use of these individuals, okay, involves multiple logistics arrangements. So, for example, the laborers live on the palm oil estate. So, in order to live on the palm oil estate, they need to be sustained. Right, they need to be sustained with electricity, food. They use vehicle uh, to go in, and uh, sometimes when you're managing thousands of hectares of palm oil estates, not every single hectare or every inch of that palm oil estate uh, needs to be sort of great. There are certain areas within these estates that are being attacked by bagworms or or parasites. So you know, sometimes it can be quite surgical, and to send workers in a truck let's say 800 acres into uh, into the uh, into the estate to spray maybe a hectare 
we find it's quite inefficient, you know, and you can have a look at the diesel consumption of one four by four, which is used to sort of transport people there, transport their spraying equipment, and their trunk injection. So, you know, if you look at that, a small to medium sized estate usually possesses seven to eight of these four by fours uh, for transporting workers to and uh, for both obviously manual spraying and trunk injection. Now, secondly, Conventionally, helicopters have been used uh, to topographically map uh, real estate terrain. Now, helicopters actually use a large amount of fuel. Okay, so for example, an hour of flight for a standard helicopter, and this is on the very low end of the spectrum. We're not talking about, I don't know, military choppers or just bell choppers that can fly people in luxury, right? And a two-seater helicopter, for observation, it emits 150 grams of CO2 hour of flight. Okay, so these small helicopters consume what six liters of fuel every single hour, right? And and if you if you think about what six liters can do for a car, it will take you what six hundred kilometers if you you know if you drive efficiently. So on the other hand, uh, nice image there. If we use UAS for spraying and mapping, it significantly reduces uh, sort of carbon emissions. We're not saying we eliminate carbon emissions. Of course, there will be an effect to the environment in terms of charging the batteries, disposal of the batteries, that sort of stuff. The act of spraying itself is also polluting, but we're not saying that we're eliminating carbon emissions or pollution, we're merely reducing it by a large amount. A uh, battery operated drone, whilst it's in operation, it emits, it, it emits zero CO2 packets. Right. I'm not talking about the charging, I'm not talking about the maintenance of all the batteries and, and the manufacturing of it. It's just while it's in operation, instead of burning 60 liters of fuel, it just uses up its lithium battery. Okay. Uh, and similarly, we're not saying that we are getting rid of workers. You know, some people might say, look, you know, if you're using drones, it means that you have to fire people, but that's not the case. Um, we're reducing carbon emission and we're also reassigning and upskilling existing manual laborers uh, to other tasks which may require skills in the estate. <laughs> right, so some applications. So this is what we call digital terrain mapping and you can see the, the contours. Okay, you can see the heat, I wouldn't say a heat map, but you can see look elevation high and low on the uh, bottom right hand side of the screen. We can use this um, you can use this to sort of determine exactly the height of how we want to spray or what the terrain is going to be like. And instead of doing this um, by helicopters, we can simply use uh, US devices uh, to do it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go back here. Right. So you can see on average, it takes a team of three laborers approximately two to three hours to cover one hectare of palm oil. Now, with a UAS, and I'll show you the and I'll show you the numbers in a moment. We're able to cover 0 0.7 hectares in something like six minutes. So if you look at that, it's you know the efficiency rate of that is 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 vast. Okay. Um, some other applications. Now, there's always been dispute or rather difficulty in monitoring plant health. How do you know which plants in your estate are healthy, unhealthy? You can usually tell from the colors, but who really wants to charter a helicopter to do it once every what month or so? It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to be inefficient. And then you've got to take photos and come back and analyze it. Now with UPS uh, solutions, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Clem, I want to let me add on. Let me add, add on this. Okay, so please. So we we use the um, drones to check the health of the plants, but now it's quite basic. Um, because we is still in the beginning stages, so now we can check if the palm is healthy, unhealthy, or is a young palm. So if you look at the right hand side of the, the legend, you can see right bottom right, you can see. Yes. So we use um, what we call a vegetation index to measure and calculate the amount of visible light. Uh, so basically, how it works is one of it is like. The drone emits visible light to the to the palm, and then it will reflect infrared. And if a palm is healthy, it will reflect most of the infrared to the drone, and it will be shown as green. So the level of um, health is that's one of the formulas that we use. If you, as you can see, it's green, red, and 
Pinyalo. So it's the the ranges, you know. Clement, continue. Okay, great stuff, great stuff. So instead of sending workers deep into plantations to apply pesticides, you can also do this in less than a quarter of the time taken. You know exactly where, what, what part of the estate is unhealthy. You know what you know. You know what um, you know what bits need to need, need to be uh, applied. So instead of using a helicopter, you just use this. You can do this there. Uh, individual trees can also be counted uh, using uh, drone solutions. So look, this. It's pre-counting. It's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into that. Okay. Um, so now, yeah, have a look at this the sample mission report from a previous project. Now you can see there are three base stations, and this is part of our process to sort of semi-automate the semi-automate the drones, so that you don't have to have a pilot flying it every single time, right? So if you look, there are three base stations, and you can see the takeoff points. Okay, and you can see that flight boundaries have sort of been defined as well. So the drone knows exactly where to go. So all it takes now is waypointing to make sure that they do what we want them to do. It reduces human input and obviously reduces the chances of any accidents happening and um, reduces the amount of manpower when we, when we look at uh, US solutions. Right? Obviously, oh, sorry. If you have any questions, yeah, you pop them in the uh, pop them in the Q and A Q and A box. Uh, even if mm -hmm. even if it's right now, you can pop it in and we'll answer later. Corey, mm -hmm. are you saying something? Yes. So uh, this is how we we plan to map an estate. So we have to block it out first. Do it do it in stages. So for example, uh, one flight we use two drones. We use uh, Phantom Four RTK drones to map the the estate so normally what we do is we take a lot of pictures right so we use um, rgb so rgb is using uh, it's sensing red blue and green so that's how they can sense uh the the, the terrain and then we then we put it in the software called the pix 4d so that's how we will stitch everything together and make it into a big map that the estate can use for their own benefit and planning and such. This is in opposition to when you take photos and manually put them together from a helicopter. You can sort of do this with, uh, with drones as well, okay, using this software. So it, it reduces time. It makes it more efficient. So... Um, one day we, we can cover 400 hectares one flight we can cover about 46 hectares which uh, take about uh 14 minutes so it's quite efficient we'll go into costings later on as yeah. well we can discuss that uh how much it saves money so if you look at this you know previously i told you that i would uh demonstrate that uh, we could actually do things with a bit more efficiency these are some flight mission records from missions we've run in the past. Um, these are all very similar takeoff points, two, one, two, and three. And you can see 12 liters of chemicals or pesticides. And you can look at the duration of six minutes and it covers 0 0.7 hectares. That compared to three hours of three laborers covering one hectare, I would say is a vast improvement in efficiency. I agree, and it's surgical. I, I like the name surgical, the one you mentioned. You can pick exactly, you can do the reconnaissance, and you can pick exactly the trees you want to, you, you, the trees you want to spray. So uh, it's a great term, surgical. It should save you on the volume uh, that you need to spray. So correct. So after we have done the health yes. check of the of the block, say for example, one block has one hectare has about 140 trees. Just as a as a basic rule of thumb, so uh, we can pinpoint through our softwares. Uh, every palm has a tagging. Every palm has a long lap. So we can just, you know, program the drone to go there and spray. But you can't spray it. You can't actually. There's no schedule when it comes to spraying pesticides for backworm purposes, because um, the backworm. We have to follow their time, you know? So basically, to put it simply, it's like this. 
So say if I want to kill a bug, a worm, correct? Any caterpillar. If it's if if I if you spray pesticides in its home, it it it, it, it doesn't get affected, right? So you have to find the right time. The right the best time is when the bagworm goes out to eat. So you spray them with pesticides, but they won't die straight away. It will take about a week for them to die. So, but they will stop eating. So they will just starve to death, basically. Okay. Yes, that, that's correct. So you can't, yeah, you need to spray it at a specific time, not according to the schedule and according to which areas of the estate has uh, have been affected. Okay. So have a look at that uh, and you can do your own calculations on the efficiency uh, if, if there are any estate owners here, right? So that's why the map is so important. <laughs> yes, that is correct. So for me, I am done um, just introducing the application of UAS solutions. I'm going to hand uh, the reins over uh, to Tunku Aznal, where he will carry on in terms of explaining and expanding on recent projects that we've done. Right? You ready, Aznal? Yeah. Ready. Okay. Slide. So, case study. Go. So, um, our first estate that we worked on uh, is uh, Kira Jubilee. Sepada Asasi and Alaf. So these are the estates that we actually put our drone solutions in. So these estates had very severe backworm issues in, in certain areas, right? Um, as it's a, it's, a, it's a big concern for the estates because the, the price of oil, uh, palm oil now is very high. The CPO price is about 4,500. So, when there's a backworm attack, the yield is severely affected, which is why they was they were they were keen on us uh, to focus on drone spraying, and also is less hazardous because you're using a lot of toxic chemicals. But also, there are different various pesticides that we use de depending on the severity of the issue. For example, there's uh, one pesticide that can that you spray, of course, when the backworm is out and eating, right? You spray it and they will starve to death in about seven days, seven to ten days. There's also another one that when you spray it, it dies immediately. But then that's not good for us as well, for the estate, because it, you want to control the biologic, you, you don't want to kill the good insects, you want to kill the bad insects. But mm. with the one with the pesticide that, that kills everything, then it's going to kill everything, right? So it will affect your yield. Mm. And um, yes, next, Clement. So for us to efficiently run a drone spraying operation, we have to do the mapping first. We have to figure out where's the land boundaries. You have to put uh, the estate on, digitalize it. So some estates have different di different requirements. Like for example, we, 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 we can mark the boundaries so it's easier to plan our flight and uh, set the waypoints before we deploy the drone on site. So normally what we do is we let the team pre-plan the flights based on the boundary map. And when we go in, in the field, we will just preset it to our drone and then it will just fly on its own. And normally we will have at least five batteries for drone mapping so we can swap it and make have a efficient uh, operation. Normally we aim to cover about 400 hectares per day, ideally, right? If not, maybe 250 perhaps, you know? 
depending on the weather as well, <laughs> mind you. Okay, so you mentioned all the batteries. You know, um, we had another, um, we had electric vehicle, we had an electric vehicle talk as well, and how you can reduce the footprint even further through solar power, and you can charge all the batteries if you build, uh, build a solar center. So you, you could go, uh, you know, the extra leg as well with your batteries, if you build, uh, you combine it with a new technology like the best solar panels today, charge your batteries, and then you can honestly say that you're significantly reducing your CO2 footprint. Yes, sir. That, that, that would be a fantastic idea. But right now, unfortunately, we don't have that technology yet. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. I guess we can expand to that sooner or later. Very soon, very soon. <laughs> solar will be very competitive and you can... Uh, or certainly biogas. We, we consult as well on biogas projects where you can take the effluent from the palm oil mill, do some biogas, and uh, that saves a lot of methane from being released. So there's other options as well. Yeah. Okay, so let me continue. Um, so there are different kinds of drone mapping, okay? Uh, normally, that's the basic one, which is using you're using RGB, to you're using the blue red and green band to do tree counting and do a plant health check right um we also yeah tree counting health check yeah and also to mark the boundaries so it's easier right but if you want a more advanced uh advanced mapping we we normally use lidar right we use a multi-spectral camera who that gives out lasers and uh, you normally can uh, as a result you will get a very accurate uh, digital terrain model for plus contour mapping so the estate, so we know that the terrain, that we know the where where's the planted areas. The estates they have offices, planted areas, staff accommodations, etc. So it's all laid out, and you can even. So with uh, lidar, you get you get the ca the height of the canopy and and, uh, and the floor as well, the elevation of the of the ground and the height of the canopy. Correct, correct, correct. So we are using RTK. RTK, uh, the best, uh, the the more the most accurate so far is about one one meter accuracy. So it's uh, very accurate. So with this, the the estate managers, the estate staff, they can use it, and they can and they can detect where is the severe areas to, for them to fix right because uh if you're if you're in the estate you can only see the trees from below you never see, you, you, you don't see what happens at the top on the crown so from the sky you can see very clearly okay and also estates does uh tree counting as well maybe every quarter or every six months you know so it's very useful so after the mapping, okay. Um, any questions? Uh, please feel to ask after the at the Q and A session. So now we are doing the pesticide spraying. Chairman, please show the video first. Okay, sure. Then I, then I explain. Right. So if you look at the drone, it's uh, it's specifically built for this sort of this sort of process, right? Um, Okay, so what you see here is our actual operations at the estate. So we were, we are actually, right now we are experimenting with the drone payload. The drone can carry about 16 liters of liquid maximum. With the customized nozzle, we have uh, we have a mist as well. We can uh, do a mist. So there are two types of spraying that we can do: spot spraying and blanket spraying. 
Okay. Sport, sport spraying means that, okay, there's this palm, who, which is um, very unhealthy, right? So we can send the drone to this palm and spray it accurately to that palm itself. Or we can, or we can do what, what this is called a blanket spraying. That means we just spray it all over. So, but we have to wait for the right time for us to spray the pesticides because uh, we need about two, three hours for the pesticides to stick on the, on the palm itself. You know, imagine if it rains and then all the pesticides just, that would that, that, that be a waste. So we have to wait, make sure that it won't rain and make sure it's applied evenly, you know. So we have to be very careful with that. Yeah. Um, what else can I say? Mm. Mm. Our drones uh, are custom made. So it's very, in terms of maintenance, it's very easy because we have uh, many parts. We can just change the parts. If one part is, is spoiled, we can just exchange it straight away. So there's no delay in operations. So the, the tank and the spray nozzle, they're your own? Uh, you, you guys developed it here in Malaysia? Okay, so um, we have partners. IDC is uh, has collaborated with uh, a company in Malaysia called uh, Polar Drone. So both uh, IDC and Polar Drone, we, um, we uh, our goal is to, is to add value to the industry. For the palm oil industry, you know, um, so they they are our, our technology partners. So, because uh, for us, for us, we also have experience in palm oil estates. You know, so we know the consumer, and we know what is a problem of the consumer. So with that knowledge, we can add value to each other and um, add value to the industry, you know, because we, it's not, it's not only drones. Now we are trying to improve on the house check um, because we do consult uh, our agronomist to help us identify, is this info correct or not? How can we improve it? with our technology. Okay. Next. Ah. Yes. So, this is a picture before the mapping is done. We have to, we have to set where is our, uh, where are we flying off from? Where's, where's, we, we, we call it a GNSS base site base camp actually. So with this GNSS base camp, we have to set it in uh, various areas. So we have to calibrate the GPS. So if you, see, if you notice the, that uh, gray thing, that gray thing at the top, right? So that connects to the drone's antenna. So the drone will be accurate to about three meters. Okay. So instead of relying on GPS on the drone itself, we have a ground control system who helps that helps the drone to realign itself. So we, we provide accurate information. This is very useful for sort of pathfinding and semi-autonomy when it comes to uh, this sort of thing. You no yes. longer have to manually pilot the, uh, the UES system to go here and go there you just have to install this is mind. this is basically for more accuracy mm -hmm. okay so yeah like when it's when it's super gray skies and there's a lot of clouds right your gps becomes less ac less accurate because you lose a lot of satellites does it does it talk is it able to know exactly where it is with respect to this gnss points or this is why we use this yeah we, we, we don't rely on the satellite so much, but this definitely helps the calibration <laughs> of your GPS. Like um, Clement, I showed you, 
previously, um, we we have planned our where's our base points. So that would, yeah. Clem, can you show back again, please? So, yeah. Okay, there. You see, notice here, base one, base two, base three. And all this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is where we take off. The base one, base two, base three is the calibration point. Yes. Any questions? You um, feel free to ask me anything after this. Uh, yeah, just, I'll just type it into the uh, the chat box. Yeah. Yes. Next okay. comment. Okay. Um, we also have something else coming in the pipeline, but this is not regarding pesticides. It's regarding fertilizers. We also have a partnership with this company called uh, Plantive Global. They have a patent for um, sachets in fertilizer. So it's basically a slow release fertilizer. Instead of fertilizing your estates six times a year or seven times a year, you can you only need to do it twice. Um, this is not. I I just speak briefly about this. Mm. But this is not a focus. Probably. Yeah, it's still under development, so we can't give you any yeah. sort of numbers yet because it's not financial so, at all. But. So basically, we would like to this this solution is in the pipeline, and uh, this would so it's like it's a slow release fertilizer. So you need so you save a lot of money. Yeah. Instead of doing twice, instead of doing six times, you do it twice only. So, so far, these have been, this has shown a lot of good results. And we are attaching the, we, we have created a prototype, a drone prototype with a box underneath. So with the map itself, we can set the drone to drop fertilizers in certain blocks, in certain areas, based on the waypoints we set inside the drone. So the payloads is about 20 kilos. But this is about something else, so let's move on. Any questions you can ask me later, no problem. Right, so we're about to get on to the Q&A session, uh, but if you wanted to sort of reach, reach out to us um, and have a chat uh, about any future projects or any collaboration, we're always happy to, to speak with you. Uh, put our email addresses down there and our QR codes. Uh, so the QR code for Tungu Arsenal will be his, his phone number. And the QR code for me will be my LinkedIn profile. So if you want to scan it right now, I guess you could. But if not, then I'm sure copies of the slides will be made available uh, soon. Right? So Ooh. I'm just going to leave you for five seconds. All right. Thank you. You can leave it on screen for a few minutes. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was interesting. Um, of course, we're always cool, interested in seeing how you can reduce CO2, how you can be much more surgical, how you can reduce waste. Often, I, I come from Canada and we used to spray everything, when in reality, it was only certain sections of the field that needed uh, the, the herbicide or the, uh, the pesticide, but we would spray everything. This is just it was just the way we did things, but I, I truly like the uh, the surgical approach that the drones give, and maybe it increases revenue. Uh, definitely, yes. that's that's uh, that's the name of the game to be cost competitive around the world. That's very important. We've got some questions in the chat. Uh, okay. I'm gonna ask a few here. One of them: uh, uh, Do you see this application extend? to other areas of agriculture, such as, you know, obviously the durian farms. Ooh, you know, those are uh, the crown jewel of Malaysia, durian farms. What do you think? Could you extend to uh, other parts of agriculture? Uh, okay. Yes, we, yes. Uh, Clement, uh, I'll take it. Go um, ahead. Thank you, bro. Uh, we can, yes, we can, because the drone sprayer is just a drone sprayer. Am I correct? So what? whatever liquid, that we put inside a payload, we can distribute it out to the estates. Sure. But we have to play with the amount of chemical that we use and the amount of water. It can't be too diluted. It can't be too concentrated. It has to be a, a balance somewhere there, you know? 
So is it pilot projects? How do you how do you monitor that, right? Do you, do you create pilot projects and do you actually get a ladder and see what's hitting the leaves? How do you how do you how do you monitor the success of a, a drone application? We check the health of the plant of the palm period, periodically. Understood. Okay. Yes. So we work with the uh, estates. Uh, agronomist to determine whether it's working or not. If not, what's wrong with it? What can we fix? <clears throat> okay. Uh, how about uh, another question here is, how do you ensure the pesticide and fertilizer will reach the, the soil surrounding the oil palm? So uh, that's one question. Wow. I guess from the pesticide yes. point of view, you're usually high up in the canopy, but the fertilizer, you want it in the ground. So how do you ensure that? It's a good question. All right. Ah, okay. Go ahead, Austin. The, can, I, can I ask one question first? Um, is it regarding fertilizers for spraying or dropping? Okay, so there's two options. I guess there's two options, right? So uh, I guess uh, fertilizer, you mentioned dropping sacks, little sacks and, and getting a slow release. So those need to hit the floor. Right. They need to hit the floor. Pesticides right. need to hit uh, the palm, and I guess you're you're way above. You're not underneath. Traditionally, yeah. traditionally it's spray. shot up underneath. Okay. Yeah? So how do you ensure it hits the plant in the right spot? Right. So normally what we do is we fly a, maybe about four meters above the palm. Yes, four meters, and and then it's a uh, it's like a mist, you know. Okay. It's like a mist. So. So we probably have to make it more, more concentrated. Oh, if I if I may add as well, if you yeah. if you want to check the application of the pesticides in real time, I should have included this image. But there's an interface which is attached to the uh, uh, to your to your base control. You can actually see what the drone is seeing. Number one, number two, in terms of results, all you need to do is look at crop yield and do another map of the. Um, do another map of the affected hectareage uh, in what was that seven days? In seven days to see whether, and then do it again in another fourteen days to see whether it's been effective or not. So it's a combination of both real time feedback and uh, review of results over a period of time. So okay, um, just like, let me be clear with something because um, right now our focus is in uh, spraying pesticides. So we haven't really explored about spraying um, fertilizer. Pesticides. Yeah. Because uh, our clients wanted us to focus on the pesticide spraying in first, and uh, we haven't really played with the combination of the fertilizer with the uh, drone. Drone, but we can do it. We can do it, but this is that like we haven't uh, really looked into it. Just yeah, give us some time. Uh, give us some uh, trials. Because we 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 want to. Um, improve on our backworm spring first because that's uh, where it's uh, very severe for many many estates even uh, the big estates in malaysia felda all these people all I'm these happy. People. yeah so um we want to focus on this first yes so Next how question. long how long have you guys been in operation have you been uh, a year doing these things or is it fairly new is uh, fairly new maybe three months i would say Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so All right. we're still we're still we're still uh, doing some experiments, but we have uh, gotten some good results. <laughs> okay. Okay. And obviously, it's a lot of uh, data, right? It's a lot of footage of uh, the cameras. It's a lot of footage of the application, and a lot of GPS points, and understanding the growth during those three months. So what do you guys do for data, data, data analysis, I guess? Uh, do you run it all on the cloud or is it uh -huh. a local computer, hard drive? What are you doing? We run it in the software. The PICT software. PICT 4D. 4D. So uh, in the software, we can play around with it. So we actually use Google Earth to help us. We use a .kml file in Google Earth to help us load it to PIX4D and we can process the information to however you require it. 
Can you integrate uh, satellite images as well? Do you integrate those and drape those over your, because uh, that's what we do in the oil industry quite often. We'll get a survey of the, of the ground and then we drape a, a satellite image on top. So the poor man's version. Um, <laughs> is, that, is that something you guys do too, looking at satellite images? We don't, um, we don't need to because we take uh, real-time pictures and we put, we stitch it together and it becomes a map. But I'm sure that if you put input in from, uh, from a satellite image, it'll function exactly the same, I think. It's just uh, you're stitching together images, aren't you? Same, yes. same, same. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's it, uh, because it's only, been, it's only been three months for you guys. You, you can <laughs> roll back on Google Earth. We were just on Google Earth the other day. You can roll back to, you know, 2017, 16, 15, and you mm -hmm. can see the history. Um, so it'd be great if you have high-res pictures today and you can go back and, and, and add those in. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so what we tell our clients sometimes that we can do the mapping every six months. So we can see the difference between the health of, of the estate from then till now. That way, that, that way we will know whether, where the areas that, should be should be fixed should be attended to yes okay there was another question thank you for that there's another question here will big birds attack the drone have you guys had any uh you know uh any attacks on the drone from many birds or uh birds are very territorial sometimes uh, I know that they're, they're using birds in airports to attack drones. If there is a drone in an airport area, they'll send a, a bird of prey out, a trained bird of prey, and it'll it'll destroy the drones. If you've seen that, uh, that some airports are doing that. Did you, have you guys experienced anything uh, uh, attacking your drones? Okay, uh, the one that you're referring to is eagles. Eagles, yeah, correct. Yes, right, but uh, no, we don't have that problem. Um, okay. Actually, uh, in some of the estates that we have done our operations in, there's a birdhouse there. So there's uh, little uh, swiftlet birds. Oh, yes. Swiftlet. So they don't uh, interfere. They, they, they just think it's a big bird flying around, so I better not mess with that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so I guess... Uh, the tree counting aspect and the LIDAR, um, I, I really like the LIDAR idea on um, getting super accurate uh, pictures of the, of the canopy straight through to the floor. And how about erosion? Things like erosion, soil erosion is one of the things in farming. Um, how do you guys, can you guys see an angle there that you can help? If you're doing a survey every six months, you can maybe note when you're having some erosion in the area. Yes, we can um, compare it, um, say if we have a mapping operation one, mapping option two, maybe every quarter, then we can see, right? But we, but we normally recommend our clients to, to do the mapping once, um, once every six months, so they can, they can see the results. Okay, cool. If you guys have any questions, you can put them in the chat yeah. box. Uh, the chat box is on the bottom right hand side. Uh, the, the call out button, put your put your questions in there. Um, I see a few more questions. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, can drone be used? Uh, uh, can you monitor things like elephants or wild boars, that kind of thing? Uh, obviously, you probably could. Uh, can you can you easily monitor animals in 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 the palm oil plantation? Okay, um, the map that we're using is uh, called the digital terrain model that only detects the rivers, um, lakes, and also man-made buildings as well, but not animals. Not animals. Okay. All right. All right. There's another question. How long is the distance that the drone can operate in one time? How, how uh, I guess, long? It can be minutes. It can be distance. It can be a lot of things. Okay. Uh, it will cover 0 0.7 hectares in six minutes for emission. If we're talking about this particular drone sprayer, replacement batteries are hot swapped into the UAS devices as they return after each mission. 
And how okay. many, uh, how, what's the distance then from the base station? So it's 0.7 hectares, but how far, how far out do you Got send it. them? So in the drone, in the drone industry, we call it the uh, visual line of sight. Mm. That, that means wherever it flies, we can see it. After all, okay. the drone will only fly between six, six to 15 minutes, depending on the payload, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't go very far. Okay. It's carrying heavy liquid to distribute the pesticides or distribute, you know? So it's water weight. It can't, be, it can't go too far. Okay, Our, and, and the, size, uh, the size of the operation is one more question here is, are you, are you thinking just big plantations can afford to do this or this can benefit small, medium enterprise, small plantations? Well, um, actually, we want to encourage uh, small, medium to large mm -hmm. uh, estates to look into this. The whole mm -hmm. spectrum? Yes, because, yeah. because uh, having some experience myself uh, in, the palm oil, in the palm oil industry, there is a major forty of labor, you know, example, all these foreign workers, local workers, especially now our borders are closed and there's a pandemic, you know, for example, one person gets it, one person is positive, right? And then he lives with nine other guys, 10 guys get it, right? So now you're down 10, uh, 10 men. 10 workers, yeah, agreed. Correct. So, you know what I mean? So okay, that, and, and, and I think there's a common misconception going around that drone services are expensive, like they cost more. I'd like to sort of sort of disprove that now. I mean, look, um, I, re I actually sort of replied it in the chat because I, I saw it before, but really, you know, we, um, we charge per hectare. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to buy the drone. I, I, people, you know, some, some customers think, look, I have to buy all these drones. I'm not, you don't really have to buy the drones. Like, we're not selling the drones itself. We're selling the application of it. Anyone can go and buy a DJI drone. It's commercially available, right? The prices are, you know, everywhere. And, it, and if you look in some of the slides, uh, DJI drones are used, right? But it's very important to know that it's not, not the device itself. It's a technology and a software that goes behind it, right? Um, there's a learning curve. There's a learning curve how you're stacking in using Pix, uh, Pix 40, how you're using the base stations, the GNSS. So there's mm -hmm. a learning curve in all these things. The actual pieces of equipment are not that expensive, but that's right. Uh, you know, up, upskilling your own workforce, uh, and that's why the training is so important. And maybe maybe you bring you in for a while, and then maybe you do invest eventually. But not okay. not every farmer has every piece of equipment. Correct. You yeah. Do, you do Correct. rent equipment. You do bring in services. So mm -hmm. I mean, um, I mean, uh, people can always buy the equipment, right? But uh, the the drone that we use for for mapping is from DJI, but the drone that we use for spraying is our custom oh, built our, drone. Custom built drone. But and it's a, we won't charge you for that, obviously. You know, we only charge you for the solution. You don't have to buy it. You know, we don't charge clients a new drone every single time they want to, you know, to contract us, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, I see. Is there any minimum size uh, required to use this drone's uh, farm size? Okay, I think Arsenal is best placed to answer this, but I think we've been trialing out pilot projects on, um, on a few other estates, right? You so, don't necessarily... Yeah. So, sorry. So oh, the smallest oh. estate that we worked on is about 500 hectares, but I mean, there's no minimum, honestly. Yeah, so uh, if you want us to pile it out, 50 <laughs> hectares, 100 yeah, hectares, just we'll see be, whether it works. Yeah. We'll be more than happy because we want to build our exposure into this so we can, you know, actually, you know, because for me, um, I'm involved in estate as well. So we use this technology to solve our own problem you see you know so ah. yeah yes. agreed. So there, there's also well. a future i guess uh we talked a little bit about this about the technology and how things are changing correct but there's a question here right at the end um thank you uh toy hua ding do you think you could possibly someday uh be harvesting fruit bunches in <laughs> 
Um, the, you can think about the strength that you would need. <laughs> These things are heavy. But uh, someday, someday. Yeah. Uh, we, we wish, we wish. Uh, but uh, so far, people have tried to create uh, drones that can do harvesting, but most of them fail miserably. It's a very, whoever creates that technology will go so far. Yeah, rich but I, I, unfortunately, uh, we don't have that uh, solution yet. Yeah, in Canada, in, in, in Canada we had um, a helicopters come in and do logging on the sides of mountains. You connect the cable, uh, the guy cuts the uh, tree down, and then uh, the helicopter takes the log, you know, 10 kilometers away and drops it off. Um, but here, yeah, uh, you need a pretty strong drone, yeah. almost like a helicopter. Because you think you need to think about two things, right? One is the energy that it's required to keep the drone sort of flying. If if we are to assume that uh, we're using aerial drones, right? We're not talking about the ground ones, right? People have tried using the ground ones, but they always get stuck when there's water. Where there's water, <laughs> the robots don't work in water, right? So if you're assuming we, if we are assuming that we're using aerial drones, UASs for this, then you need to think about the, you know, number one, the energy that's required to keep that that thing afloat in the air. And number two, the, the mechanism for cutting itself, okay? Like yeah. that's kind of cost up. Unless someone designs like a laser cutter or something, that would be great. Um, and yeah. the third thing, how many of these fruit bunches do you expect one drone to carry? Okay. And you know, one of these palm oil bunches is quite heavy, right? And you think yeah. about that, you, you add it all to the payload, right? You know, I, I think at some point, you know, that drone's gonna have to run off fuel or something, man. And that does obviously, obviously that doesn't help the situation at all, right? If you're trying to be more green, um, but yeah, hopefully, if you're it's trying to be more green. So battery power, strength of uh, the drone, and uh, the cutting mechanism, and predicting the weight that you're gonna have to take uh, each time. Uh, oh, I, just I'm cut the fruits. Know. Okay. Yeah, I just cut the fruits. Okay. I mean, look, unless someone uh, unless someone designs some some form of laser cutter, man, that would be great, man. That would be great. Uh, yeah, but. Um, Unfortunately, uh, we don't have this uh, solution. I mean, somebody has yeah, yeah. Uh, spoken to us about this, you know, mm -hmm. if you were applying some grants application and whatnot. Um, they said, oh, do you have any application for harvesting? So, unfortunately, I wish we had, but we don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we've had lots of questions. Thank you very much. We're coming close to the hour. I'll tell you what, um, they can contact you. They have your details. We'll be posting uh, your details on our LinkedIn. And Milan. you're welcome to contact Milan. Clement and, and uh, Mr. Tunku as now. Yeah. And please, everyone, uh, if you can. Uh, sorry, I know some of the questions haven't been answered. I apologize. We're coming close to, uh, uh, to, coming close to the hour. Uh, we'll, maybe you can contact uh, uh, the no. presenters or contact us and we'll forward your questions to them. Um, please, uh, please uh, contact us. Uh, my phone number is there in Clemens. Clemens. Uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn's always good. LinkedIn is there as well. Yeah. So feel free to drop me a text or email that I will answer you straight away. No problem. And me too. You can contact me and yes. I'll forward it. I'm that out well. there. Yes. I'm out there. So please, there's a question and answer form now, and you're welcome to click on it. If you have any more questions, you can put them on the question and answer form as well. Um, stay tuned for our next talk. We're going to be looking at, uh, are we ready for deep sea mining? Uh, so another, another oh, good one. Be interesting. Uh, We're using drones for that. <laughs> yeah, well, for that, it's, it's uh, ROVs, a remotely operated vehicles deep sea. So I'd be very interested in, in, in trying to make that connection on new technology and reducing CO2 and maybe finding some new minerals. Uh, yeah, so thank you for your time, everyone.